So my name is Maggie, and this is a poem that I wrote. Let me just get this in here. Urine. Accompanied by the fetid stench of death, greet us as we step out of the elevator. And I am five years old, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven years old, and I am here with my mother. We are standing in the hallway of one of three hospitals in the center of town on the terminal ward. We've come to visit my grandfather, aunt, uncle, cousin, neighbor, or anyone else who my mother has cast a shadow on at church. She stands in the hallway and she puts her hand on the wall and she takes a deep breath in and release. Let the visit begin. And she brings with her the universe both near and far, news from the family and the world at large. She pushes away the sound of the machines the patient is attached to and the odor of the urine that's clamped to the side of the bed. And their patient, their eyes light up as if to say, I am not dead yet. I'm putting my two cents in. I am still here with you, my dear. On the way home in the car, my mother would often remark, did you notice your uncle and your grandfather and Mrs. Kennedy, they're all alive and sharp as a tack? Mommy, why must we visit these people? It's because they are dying and we must visit them. Now there are rules that are unwritten and then there are rules that are unspoken. And it's these rules that my mother is the master. So you could imagine the size of my delight when neighbors, new neighbors, just moved down two houses down from us. And they are expecting a baby any day now. Finally, someone my mother can prattle on about who is alive and not hospitalized. So we greet the new couple <laughs> with all the excitement and effervescence that comes with the expected of a new baby. And the next morning, we get the call. An ambulance was called in the middle of the night to bring the young couple to the hospital, to bring forth a new baby girl, stillborn. Coffins for newborns are small. This one is white. And the silence in the church is so loud and ponderous. And the couple who was tumbled over with effervescence just the day before now stand racked with grief. We're at home now. My mother is standing in the kitchen. And she's doing a breathing exercise. And I touch her shoulder. And the dam bursts. And all the tears from all the years of visiting friends and family come pouring out of her face brought forth by the child who didn't catch a breath of air to hear the sound of her own name. I hold her in my arms, which seems like an hour, but it was a short time, really, because she pushed me away and scampered up the stairs to take a shower. As you see, she was invited to a wedding. It's going to take place this afternoon. The bride, she lives three houses down from us, and the wedding is to take place in the same church. For this is life. This is how it's done. Simple like that. Simply done like that. And now I go and I visit my friends and I bring with me the universe. Thank you. Wow. <laughs>